Well, within Australia, the art market's really set up into two distinct markets. There's the primary market, which is predominantly all the galleries that you find out uh, in in the cities and towns around the uh, around the place. And then there's the, the auction market, and the auction market is the formal secondary trading market. Now, when the papers tell you about um, such and such a painting has just uh, gone for you know a million dollars that will typically be through the auction market. Um, now, not every work is accepted for auction and it's very much in the sort of mid-career to blue chip end of the market is where the auction houses are, are interested. Um, so from an art investment point of view, the trick is to be trying to find emerging talent that will one day end up in the auction market and consequently be selling for quite a bit more than it is being released at a gallery. Uh, now a lot of galleries also trade on the secondary market but not in an auction sense. So uh, for instance if you've got a Fred Williams watercolour gouache painting um, which at auction will reach anywhere between forty and sixty thousand dollars you may well be able to get a similar sort of painting from a gallery in, in, a, um, a, in the high street at a similar sort of market. So galleries will deal in both uh, both ends. But investing in art, uh, obviously quality is an issue and when you, you're coming into the art market that's a very difficult thing to, to get a sense of value about the work if you, if you don't come from uh, a background in fine arts. Um, we like to simplify things and to say okay well let's break the market up into emerging mid-career and blue chip artists. Broadly speaking, emerging talent buy what you like because you may very well have to hang on to it forever. Um, Mid-career, you're starting to see some auction activity, uh, some major collections that the artists are being hung in, some major prizes that the artists are winning might be hung in the Archibald Prize, may actually have won the Archibald Prize, so notoriety and press and uh, curatorial recognition. And then blue chip, uh, often a lot of those artists are actually deceased. Uh, but there's, a, there's a, a, a trading history there. So for instance, someone like John Olson, who's still very much alive and producing some magnificent work, um, there are thousands and thousands of uh, trades on the auction market that give an underlying value to a watercolour being around $75,000 now, whether it's at auction or in the gallery uh, sense. Now, so, You've got those three broad categories and then it's how the risk profile you'd like to adopt as an investor. This is slightly different from being a collector. Um, as a collector, you tend to buy a little bit more with your heart, but it's always wise to consider the price of these things too. But as an investor, what's the, the important um, point is to buy in at the right price and to understand that there is value in, in that artist. If you, if you like a riskier investment and want to have a, a, a dip your toe in the water and have a bit of a play, you can get involved with a fantastic oil painting by a really great emerging artist for around $5,000, but it is quite risky and you're looking at probably a long-term hold. Um, but for $5,000 at the blue chip end, you're, you're looking at a print. Now, interestingly enough, that print is far more tradable tomorrow than the oil painting by the emerging artist. And if the emerging artist travels really well, you're probably going to do very well out of that painting. There are many examples of that over the last 10 years that I, that I could uh, list. But really, it depends on, and, and this is more of a financial advisor's question, if you're, you're divvying up your client's the amount of money they've got to invest and how much money they need at call and how much they want as a long-term lockdown asset. And that's the important thing with art is it is not liquid. So while some things can trade very quickly, you must have out of your mind the consideration that it's trade plus three or trade plus two. It doesn't work like that. Um, you've got to look at a seven to 10 year time frame. If things go really well for the artist, Trades can be executed really quickly and at auction you know, the hand goes up and you're paid out a couple of days later. That's all fine. 
but it's it is a, a, a long term more sleeper uh, approach and but the good thing is with some of the things we can do with rental income and what have you you are deriving monies on the way through but the the question of how much you need to get involved in I mean some people have got $100,000 to spend some people have got a million dollars to spend our advice is really if you're looking at, at doing this in some sort of meaningful fashion where you're you're getting involved where you've got a you've got a holding which is interesting and, and will keep your attention ten to fifteen thousand dollars is, is a pretty good place to start uh, I suppose what you've got to understand about art is that artists don't create investments they create art and the market is centered around and, and most collectibles are centered around the desire that someone's going to have for for a work down the track and that can be because of, uh, uh, to an extent of fashion it can be quality and, and, and tertiary recognition you know from major institutions and all and, and auction activity but what we did about six years ago six or seven years ago um, we were looking at art as an investment our business has been going for over seven years now and Raj Nanda who is the CEO here came from an infrastructure background so he put together Macquarie's infrastructure um, fund um, and uh, was head of UBS uh, after that was head of UBS structured finance through Asia and so he came from a period of time when people were starting to look at investing in toll roads and infrastructure and at that time that was considered an alternative asset within within the um, the investment field so with his sort of structuring mind he said well what is the fundamental flaw in investing in art right now and it is as you just said there's no income stream from it okay you buy the work you hope put it on your wall you hope like heck it goes up but sometimes it's pretty hard to justify to your own in your own mind that okay you, you you're spending ten thousand dollars on a bunch of shares you get a dividend and you get the capital appreciation or not what we're saying with art is okay well you've got got the painting it, it may go up in value it may go down in value you've, you've always got the artwork so there are some tangible benefits there but there is another side to the to the business and that is the the fact that corporate Australia and and to an extent uh, um, a number of other areas of the Australian collecting houses and what have you that need art but can't afford to have hundreds of thousands of dollars tied up on the wall because when particularly if they're listed companies you know you come to a shareholders meeting and they're saying well okay there's three hundred thousand dollars worth of asset there it's a bit hard to justify but there's no dividend going out this year so for a fraction of the cost corporate australia can rent art and it's been done very successfully for a number of years through an organization called art bank which is a government organization or quasi-government organisation, and they've got they've got the sort of captured market, if you like, of of all the all the Commonwealth uh, departments, and their charter is, is magnificent. It's to help emerging and mid-career talent in Australia. Um, so it's it's a recognised collection. There's a panel that select the work, and then they rent it out to anyone who who needs art, which is fabulous for the artists. They get paid, fabulous for the government because it's a generating income and uh, it's terrific but there up until Raj put this structure together there would never been a meaningful way that people could invest in art and then derive an income stream <laughs>